Hello fellow riders and welcome back to Airhead Bar. In our last episode uh, we were able to complete our disassembly process of 1977 R75-7 and from now on we will move toward more of a bench work. Uh, in this episode I'll start with a swing, swing arm. I'm going to completely rebuild it. Uh, I was able to clean it and degrease it properly but it's uh, it's pretty shut so we will need to powder coat it and in order to do that we need to remove shaft and I'll also remove bearings because those need to be replaced anyway. Uh, anyway. So in this episode I'm going to show you uh, how shaft is removed uh, from a swing arm and also how bearings are, are removed as well. Okay, uh, let's proceed. So in order to remove shaft from a swing arm uh, there is a 24 mm nut basically on this side that you need to unscrew but since shaft is rotating in order to remove that one you need to clamp the joint of a shaft in, in a vise. Uh, before doing that first I'm going to inspect uh, these joints, uh, the condition of them and I don't feel any play in those which means they are in pretty good condition so we can definitely keep the shaft as it is just to remove it from a swing arm. Uh, the way how you clamp it in a, in a vise, the best way is actually if you clamp the upper uh, joint, not the lower one, uh, because when you are unscrewing you don't want to put uh, uh, you don't want to put tension on, on a lower one, you want to do it on the upper one because it's a solid body with the upper part of the shaft. are pretty tight usually. Okay, okay. now when, when nut is removed uh, we need to uh, remove the uh, pinion inside and for that we will need to use puller. I'm going to use soft jaws to mount the swing arm. Now we will set the puller. So I have this puller from Cycleworks. It, it basically like two halves that come together underneath the drag gear. Okay, just like that. And then two big bolts that go through. and then two nuts are holding everything together.
Okay. Now there is aluminum piece that is used so that uh, puller does not damage the part of a shaft, does not damage a shaft. We put it like this. And then there is this part that goes on top like plate. And now basically four bolts that screw in. Always a good idea is to grease bolts so there is no friction between them and a the, the puller. completely screwed it's time to slowly tighten each bolt you know maybe like water turn at a time and it should pull out the uh, gear drive here it is Basically the only thing that holds it attached to the shaft is, is a taper. Now we will go and, and remove a puller and shaft can go out. So first, uh, what you need to remove is essentially this sleeve or bushing, that one goes out first. After that, uh, you have a seal here that needs to be removed. The easiest way is actually with a screwdriver. Here is a bearing. And these outer races, they get uh, kind of damaged because these are not like wheel bearings that they are rotating all the time. Swing arm, same as a, as a uh, steering bearing, steering head bearing, they just slightly move. And that's where you can see like notches and you can see basically uh, hot and cold spots on the outer race. That means that uh, it's time to replace it. Also when you are putting grease, uh, it's a good idea not to use bearing, standard bearing grease because that grease is meant for uh, bearings that rotate and produce a lot of heat. Uh, these do not produce a lot of heat and then standard uh, grease for bearings can get actually pretty uh, gummy. For that reason you need, uh, it's better to use other type of, of grease.
Okay, so these are called then hotspots that I was telling you about. I, I hope you can see those, which means, and, and these do not come off when you try to wipe it. They stay. So this definitely means uh, this uh, bearing is up for replacement, was up for replacement. Okay, now we are going to rotate swing arm and do the same on the other side. Proceed bearing is out. Let's clean everything. Now we are going to remove that uh, out of race. Okay. Now everything just needs to be cleaned, uh, masked, the parts that we don't plan to powder coat, and 
And that's it. The swing arm is ready. So we have our swing arm back from powder coating and now we will proceed with the bearing installation. Finally we are going to put the shaft back in. And to do bearing installation uh, I already uh, packed uh, bearings with grease. Uh, you can do this with a grease packer but you can also do it manually. It's, it's a fairly simple process. Just don't use a standard bearing grease. I prefer using this uh, liquid moly uh, that has MOS2 here. Uh, it's really nice grease for this application when bearings do not produce that much heat with a constant rotation but they are just dancing around one middle point. And that is true for swing arm and also uh, steering bearings. Okay, so how we are going to do this? Uh, first, don't forget to put a plate in a side that is open before you drive the outer uh, race in. Uh, I'm going to heat up uh, just a tiny bit uh, this uh, swing arm so uh, outer race goes uh, easily inside and I'm going to use a seal uh, driver for that. Okay, plate goes inside and the heat gun. Alright, just slipped in. Perfect. That's it. We are actually going to uh, leave it to cool down before we flip it over because I don't want it to come out. Okay, now we can uh, flip the uh, swing arm over and do the same thing on the other side.
like this. Now we can do bearings. on the outer seal and then the bearing just slides in. And now this sleeve goes through the seal and then we can drive everything uh, with a 27 mm socket. That's it. Okay, now we are going to put a shaft <coughs> in. Finally, all we need to do is uh, torque this nut. Right, so we set it in wise. Uh, we will torque this nut. So, based on the manual, this nut goes pretty high. So, 200 to 220 Newton meters, uh, which goes 148 to 162 uh, foot pounds. I think I'll use middle like 150 or 155. Okay, and then big torque wrench. Okay, 
that's it. Swing arm is ready to be mounted.